Right now, Scott Kelly, seven months into his year-long mission on board the International Space Station, uh, getting in the habit of setting a few records uh, during his time in space. Uh, today, Scott Kelly passing another American spaceflight record, 215 days on a single mission. This is actually a record that was set uh, by the Expedition 14 crew. So both Scott Kelly and Mikhail Korninenko breaking that record today. Uh, that was set by uh, former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin. Uh, my colleague Rob Navius was able to catch up with Lopez Alegria from Washington, D.C., where he currently works as an independent consultant. So why don't we take a look? 215 days in space on your flight, 213 of which were on the International Space Station. Uh, did it seem like a marathon or did the time fly by? How was it for you? You know, surprisingly, it went by quickly. I uh, had flown three short duration missions on the shuttle before that, and I was a little uh, anxious about how it would be to have such a long flight afterward. Um, but the time really went by quickly, and I think it's just the feeling of being part of a team and doing something that was important that obviously is there during a shuttle flight that really never went away on the station flight. So it, uh, it went by very fast. Well, as they say, records are made to be broken. Uh, Scott Kelly has uh, whizzed by your 215-day mark. Uh, what are we learning from these milestones that will be very important for NASA and for the future of human spaceflight? Rob, as you know, the ISS is uh, first and foremost a laboratory, and one of the key things we're doing there is learning about human physiology as it adapts to zero-g. We have quite a few data points from folks that have been up there for around six months, but um, none beyond uh, that or close to it at seven months. So uh, Scott's going to be obviously blazing new trails if we ever want to go to uh, beyond low Earth orbit um, to an asteroid or to Mars. It's going to be important to understand what the longer term, longer than six month effects are. Also, there's the additional bonus that he's got his twin brother on the ground, Mark, which is a really interesting uh, possibility to investigate things, too. So I think there's a lot of uh, great medical science return from this mission from Scott. Mike, uh, when you were on board uh, some eight years ago, the space station was half the size uh, as it is today, uh, this mammoth city in the sky, if you will. Uh, even for seven months in space, uh, did you ever feel confined? I, I know you did spacewalks. You were able to stretch your legs, as it were, outside of uh, the station from time to time. But did you feel confined? Uh, did you feel uh, that you were missing something that you needed up there? You know, it's it was really surprising. I mean, you're right. It is a relatively small volume. <clears throat> but... You know, at the time, there were only three of us on board, and we would go the entire day sometimes without seeing each other except at uh, meal times. because uh, even though it's relatively small, we still had more than one module to ourselves. And if you had a task that was sort of concentrated in one place and, and the others had one in their places, then it was not unusual to go the entire day without seeing each other. So it never really felt that um, tight to me like the cabin fever that you might expect. It was actually pretty comfortable. You know, the day is coming in the not too distant future when uh, astronauts will be pressing much further out of low Earth orbit uh, to explore the stars and walk on Mars. Uh, talk about the space station as that waypoint, a technology test bed, if you will, uh, from which future technologies are being developed that will be applicable for the future. Well, aside from the medical things that I described a little while ago, you know, we are using um, this uh, platform as part of the proving ground. So there's uh, the near uh, Earth, low Earth orbit environment. Then we'd like to expand that to cislunar space and then finally go beyond, um, you know, on the way to Mars or a moon of Mars eventually. And so it is important not only to understand the human piece of it, but also to develop the technologies, particularly the life support uh, things. I mean, what's nice in a way about the ISS is if something breaks, we have lots of spares. And if we don't have something, we can order it more or less from the ground. That won't be the case um, on our way to Mars. So we've got to really think about the reliability of the equipment and having the luxury to do that in low Earth orbit is a great advantage with, that I, I know we're taking advantage of now because of um, you know, the sparing situation uh, on the ISS. And as we talk about the future, you can't talk about the future without talking about the youngsters of today with their eyes on the sky who may one day 
be the first humans to walk on Mars. What uh, would your advice to them be? Well, look, you know, when I was an astronaut, I used to say, study math or science, that's the way to become an astronaut. I think that's changing a little bit. And, and uh, I would not only say to study math and science, which are obviously very important to be a professional career astronaut like we have at NASA, but there are opportunities to fly in space that are coming up via commercial companies that really what's important is to be successful. And in order to be successful, you have to do what you like to do. So follow your dream. If that's math or science, fantastic. If it's not, that's okay too. Follow your dream, do the best you can, and that's the quickest way to the stars. And Mike, age uh, notwithstanding, you're not an old guy. Uh, where would you like to be right now in line uh, for a trip to an asteroid or perhaps to Mars? First. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, everybody, uh, I, I've, I was very fortunate and, and felt um, accomplished to have been able to fly as much as I did. And it's appropriate for us to, you know, hand the baton to the next generation, seeing guys like Shell and, you know, Scott's a little bit older than that, but to, to some degree, um, taking the baton and running with it is really great. And I don't, um, I, I would love to be in the situation to fly again, but I'm content those of us that have moved on um, to do different things in life. So I salute those guys, um, the ones that are in the Corps, the eight that would just uh, join the astronaut corps at NASA especially, and wish them well. And as you say, you know, it's, it's the, the people, the first people to walk on Mars are probably alive right now, and that's an exciting thing to consider. Mike uh, Lopez Alegria from Washington, D.C., I want to thank you for your time today. It's always great to talk to you, and best of luck. Likewise, Rob, thanks to you. So long.